start it for you. Okay. All right, so here's how it works. Uh, if I'm talking mm -hmm. animatedly and mm -hmm. directly at the camera, then you bring it up to me. Okay. Uh, if I'm, and most of the time I'll be talking about this stuff, then just go ahead and wherever I'm gesturing, you'll put the camera there. All right. Uh, you, and you'll put it about this far away. Okay. Maybe even a little clip, but once you get within like 10 inches, it starts to blur up, so it's no good. Okay. All right, so here we go. Hey folks, it's time for a battle report. This one's going to be a little weird because we're going to start at the, um, what is it, the bottom of the third turn or something like that. And uh, this is a game of uh, hordes uh, between me and Cameron. I have my um, Circle of Orboros army, so I'm going to kind of explain what's happened so far. First off, the mission is something. I can't remember what it is. It's objectives. There's three objectives. And starting on the second turn, at the end of your turn, you get a point if you have a guy in contact with the objective. That's these little uh, tiny fluorescent skull-like objects there. So on his first turn, because um, Cameron took, uh, took the first turn, uh, he scored two points for two objectives. And on his second turn, he got two points for two objectives. And basically, Cameron's just moved up. Uh, he's got his uh, troll uh, uh, tr dire troll and some fin blades here, right in the middle of the board. Uh, he's got some uh, warcaster and two supporting uh, creatures there, a fell collar and a chronicler. And this is the special care, obviously unpainted, the special character troll from Domination. And I, quite frankly, don't know anything about him, so I'm going to be unpleasantly surprised at some point. Uh, I should add. Uh, I've had some casualties. Um, the only casualties on the troll blood side are uh, about uh, two or three fin. In fact, it's three fin blades is all I've been able to really take out. Uh, and he is. Oh, this guy was never in there. It's 35 points. So uh, Cameron, however, has taken out two uh, Wartborn Skinwalkers. So the casualty total is actually pretty even. And uh, but I th I think I've got it now. Uh, but you know, a good plan always unravels um, when it's actually uh, put into effect. That actually make it a good plan? Probably not such a good plan. Yeah. All right. So, um, but I, I did want to just show you this board and how interesting this is, and uh, maybe talk a little bit about how War Machine and Hordes is played. The best armies are one that has a combination of things. So, um, in a 35 point army, he has uh, fin blades, he's got a unit command, which is this guy, oddly the least dressed of them, and a drummer there. And it's the support. It's the synergy pieces. Uh, for example, he's casting a spell called Iron Skin, which gives them plus three defense. And that makes them very hard to just hit them. So, for example, if my uh, melee attack is six and their defense is 12, I normally need a six to hit. But since it's now plus three, which makes it 15, it means I need a nine to hit. And anyone that's uh, familiar with um, whoops, with bell curve uh, probabilities knows that that is uh, quite a jump in uh, in probability to have to get a nine to hit. Uh, but I thought I'd go over because it's bottom of the second, and uh, it's my turn. So uh, the now the problem here is uh, he's ahead by a point. So unless I somehow catch up. I'm not going to win the game. In fact, if anything, if somehow he gets three, he could win at the bottom of his next turn by having two plus two plus three is seven points. So, uh, but let me, tell, let me tell you the evil things I'm going to do in my turn because I've kind of got it plotted out now. Uh, first, so this is how it's going to look. This Wartborn Skinwalker is going to attack the leader here. I have a high, it's highly unlikely I'll do anything. Uh, and then the next thing to activate is Laris. Now Laris is kind of, uh, it is an arc node, he's what's called a channeler, which means she can do her spells through him. So Laris is going to jet up here like this to this spot, and uh, that's about it. He's just going to stand there. And uh, then I'm going to activate the Druid Wilder, move her up here behind this rock, and uh, she's probably going to die in a subsequent turn, as you shall see. But she's going to cast Wraithbane, which is this guy's animus, and she's going to cast it on him. And that is 
means he ignores spells that boost defense or armor. So that means this guy can ignore this spell, bringing their defense back down to 12. Kaya is going to cast uh, Evolution on the Pure Blood, and then she's going to move over here. And that, that's why I had this marker out there, just to kind of remind me of that. And so she'll be within 12 inches of Loris, and she's going to channel a uh, muzzle on this guy, which means if it damages him, and it's likely to do so, because it'll be, uh, it'll be boosted, um, it means he can't move any closer to Kaya. Like, he can't end his movement closer to her. Uh, and then she's going to do her feet, which means... At the end of every War Beast's activation, they can teleport back to where she is. Uh, unfortunately, that is going to leave this guy out flapping in the wind. But <laughs> them's the breaks. It's better than uh, losing one of my two War Beasts on uh, his activation. Uh, now comes the fun part. The Pure Blood can charge the Dire, dire Troll Mauler, and if he comes in at the correct angle, he's going to get uh, back arc attacks at plus two mat. Let me tell you the difference there. Dire Troll Mauler's defense is 12. Let's put that down. And my mat melee attack is six. So that means I need sixes to hit, right? Aha, but if you strike from the rear arc, you get plus two. So I will only need a four to hit, which is quite easy. And uh, ramping him up with forced evolution, is going to, and warp strength is going to put him at strength 18, and that means bye bye Dire Troll Mauler. I'm probably going to take that guy out. And then the last, and then, and then he'll teleport back to where Kaya is, right? And uh, then I'll activate the Stalker. Predicted casualties is three to five Fin Blades. So if I'm lucky, I'll take out a big chunk here in the middle, and. I'll be looking pretty good. Unfortunately, I've only got this wolf here, so that's one point, and then there's one point here, and I will still be that critical one point behind in my, uh, in my score for actually gaining objectives. So there you go. Uh, I, did, I just wanted to show this to you. The other night we were kind of in a hurry. I couldn't do a battle report. Oh, uh, you here, come closer. You Warhammer Fantasy people. And by the way, I love Warhammer Fantasy. I really do. Uh, you're going to be pretty disappointed in me. I actually had um, John. You remember um, the guy that made the uh, Ogre Scrap Launcher out of items from, the, uh, from Taco Bell um, and a child's toy? He was down with his goblin army to play my High Elf, but there was just so much going on, we just couldn't do it. And uh, so he was, uh, he was quite sporting about it. So thank you, John, and uh, so another time it will be, but hopefully I will reward you with a 40k bat rep and a hordes thing, and then uh, Warhammer Fantasy next week. My point is, with showing you all of this, is isn't this a wonderful game? It's so rich and so complex with so many options, even in a small army. My army only has four, five, has only like nine figures in it, and it is, it's just, I can't get enough. I can't get enough of playing this game. It is really super. It takes a little doing. You need probably 10 to 20 games to really start kind of getting the hang of it, get the hang of your force. Uh, the other thing is that I wanted to show you is I got in this trade of confrontation models, and among them, these wonderful Celt Fianas, uh, which are these quite attractive figures. They're out of print. Uh, they were put out... Uh, by a French company called Rackham. Some of you may be familiar with the game Confrontation. And these are going to be my uh, druids and my druid special characters because I have like a piper and this totem bearer and this Celt uh, Fianna queen. Also this uh, old minotaur figure uh, by Rackham it is going to make a fantastic satyr uh, figure. And I'm just... I, I'm just absolutely no end of stout about those guys. So, uh, so there you go. Hope you enjoyed, got your inspiration for the day. And by the way, I'm counting this as a battle report, part one. 
uh, you'll be able to see part two and maybe go into a three uh, tomorrow when Cameron's back in. Yeah, press the button.